Hi everyone. Today's project, I'm going to start doing my first mixed media canvas. I've done mixed media in my journals for a number of years, as many of you have seen on my videos in the past, but I've never actually done a full big canvas. Probably the largest art journal I've had is about an 11 by 14. But here, I thought I might start, let me see, this wall right here. I thought I might start um, using that to display some of the work that I do. It'll be mixed with other things, um, photos of places we've been as a family and things like that. But I thought I would also put some mixed media art there. Those white pillows down there, they won't be white, hopefully, by next week. My cousin's coming into town and he's bringing me those zipper covers to go on the pillows. Um, so since we just moved here, there's a lot of decor type of items that Ecuador doesn't really have. And then when you do find them, they're very, very expensive. They're at least twice as much as they are in the States prior to a sales price. So say at Hobby Lobby, you get a canvas for $40 normal price. No coupon, no anything. Here it'll be 80 for that one item. So um, I ordered a whole bunch of pillowcase covers to zip on top of these. Um, those pillows, since they make them here in Ecuador, are about the same price as they are in the States. So you just kind of have to pick and choose um, what is economical to purchase versus what to wait on for a family member or friend to come from the States. So that will be a little more colorful for you by next week. And I thought I would wait to color this mixed media canvas until those items come in so that the color scheme all kind of goes together. Um, with that in mind, I wanted to do, get into the face portraits. Now I took art in school for many years, um, five years, most of my junior high years and a couple years in high school. I also did programs of what's called art after school that my parents paid for. Um, and so I haven't worked on facial portraits since that time, but I've seen a lot of videos of people trying to learn how to do those facial portraits again, and it brought back some memories. Some of those memories were using stencils. And so you'll find a lot of the mixed media artists do have facial stencils or stamps that they've released to help you kind of be able to place where the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the proportions of where everything is. So Dana Wakely has some, um, Jane Davenport has a series of stamps that she's released, which those I'm really eyeing. But I wanted something a little more unique for what I'll be putting in my own place. So I saw another video the other day on YouTube, and I'll try to link her below. It was a silhouette tutorial on making your own stencils. Um, she made it out of paper, but I found it's going to be very practical for what I'm trying to do on my canvas. So let me show you that. So the website that she featured is this one called Photo to Stencil. And all you do is upload your photo. Okay, so you're going to find your photo wherever you happen to have it. Now, on this particular day, both of my girls have a similar pose looking at butterflies in a butterfly house. And I've always loved these profile pictures of them. So before you go into your um, photo to stencil program, you're going to want to crop your photo to be as close to the silhouette of the image that you want. So this photo was quite a bit larger, and it's my inspiration photo for this canvas. Um, but I cropped it to just have her face in here as much as possible in order to get an accurate stencil. So then I saved this image, and now I saved it right here. I'm going to click Open. So now it's uploading and it's converting that photo into a stencil. Now what it does is it gives you several different um, layers. And it divides it into three layers, a dark shade, a medium shade, and the lightest shade. So this is more like your blackout in the background. 
and then this is the next shade up, and then this one. Now what I'm really looking for is something similar to this, where I get the nice contour of where her nose is, her mouth, her chin, as well as the eyes and the eyebrows. That gives me a good guideline so that I'll be able to use it on my canvas. So they have different, you just highlight over all of these different ones and find which one has the amount of detail that you happen to be looking for for yours. So these are a little dark for me. I like this one because it really shows the placement of everything. I think that's the one I'm going to go with. So when you do that, it'll say download SVG as a single, which is this one here, or download it as a three color um, application. So after you've saved your SVG file, you want to go into your Cricut Design Space and click Upload Images. All right, so now I'm going to upload that image of the stencil that I made. I'm going to go find that folder. Okay. So here I have the entire file, and I'm just going to click Save. Insert image, and now it's on my mat. I'm going to click Edit. The height I'm going to make all the way to size 11 um, because I'm going to use an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock to cut this out. You'll see it will cut out all of these spots um, so that I get a nice dimension of where the head is, how it's positioned, where the mouth, the eyes, and the eyebrow. Again, this is just for placement. Um, and especially for me, drawing the nose is the hardest part. So what I love about having a stencil is that I have the perfect contour of the face and then everything else I can make kind of whimsical according to however I want to make my mixed media project. Now my canvas I believe is 12 inches tall, but I'm also going to allow some room for the neck. So I am going to make this one 11 inches high and click the go button and cut it out on my Cricut. So typically what people do with screen printing and things like that is they would take the various layers and then they would start applying the paint using this as a mask. Well, I'm going to be doing a little bit of the opposite. I'm going to take these same layers and I'm going to cut them out and use them as a dimensional part of my background and build on top of that. Her hair, uh, putting butterflies in the hair, coloring the face, all on top of some gesso and some other mixed media product. So um, that is how I felt I would get a more realistic rendition of her actual face shape, better than me trying to draw it. So when I drew it, I got the same proportion very well, but of course it's gonna be very abstract. And I was wanting a little bit more realistic. So um, I'm going to use her actual cutout of the face. But before I add the face cutout to my background, I want to add some um, texture and some other elements. For example, I had created these masks on another video with my Cricut Explore Air. I'll link that video down below if you didn't get to see those. I just used cereal box and made some stencils. So I kept the cutout pieces so that I can add them as dimensional effects here as well. This I'm just going to be using as a misting mask to act like the net that was in the butterfly exhibit. Um, and so these different materials I'll use for those. And I'll explain in detail more when I get to that point as to what those items are.
last night. My daughter helped me fix the eye and the eyebrow area. Um, I really didn't like it and uh, she ended up cracking up laughing at me. So um, she helped and fixed that eye area for me so that it looks a lot better and I don't actually mind putting this up in my house. So um, I just wanted to show some of the products that we ended up using um, in this project. Those for the skin tones were the Faber-Castell Gelatos. Um, for the eye, it has white in it. And then for most of the face is this Faber-Castell uh, peach color. Now I did also mix into that a more yellow color because it was just coming out too faint against the white gesso. So I did use this Lindy Stamp Gang uh, Yellow Rose of Texas. And by mixing it with the gelato, it took down that shiny glitter effect. For this dark blue background, again, it's Lindy Stamp Gang Magical Micas. This one is Afternoon Delight Denim. Um, to do the misting mask, I used the cutout. I had demonstrated this in another video. I'll attach it here as a suggested item. Um, this one I cut out on my Cricut Explore Air, and then I just laid it down, and with my spray mister, I spritzed out these little, to make it look like the net that was in the butterfly house. So I mixed two colors. That was the Queen of Hearts Red and the Screamin' Banshee Black from Lindy Stamp Gang. So those were together to get this darker tone. For her hair, these are all butterflies from a sequence pack I got, and all I used was a paintbrush with this. Um, against the when I tried to spray it initially against the white gesso, it was coming out pink, so it was better to just use the, um, the brush itself. These butterflies are those same colors. It's the Queen of Hearts Red for these darker ones. The little bit lighter ones is Tiger Lily Orange, for example, here, here, and here. And then the others are, again, that Yellow Rose of Texas. All of these are um, magical micas. For the background, I used this Faber-Castell gesso, and to be honest, I think I like the golden gesso better. So um, I'm gonna try to get either Liquitex or golden gesso here in the next month or so, so I can have a better prep for my backgrounds. Now it does work well with the actual Faber-Castell products themselves. Um, for the face, it worked fine. But I found for these, uh, the Lindy Stamp Gang, it just didn't have the same effect that I've had with um, the gesso from, from Golden that I've used in the past. And then for the eye and the eyebrow, we used this Derwent Ink Tense Pencil in Ink Black 2200. So those are all the items I used. Again, all of these were just templates that I cut out from the um, Cricut Explore Air in a previous video when I made my own stencils and then I used those elements to create this mixed media piece. Thanks for watching.